So this is going to be for my on Ansible talk. Uh, I'm on Razor, and I'm going from the uh, boring stuff to the interesting parts. So get get to. So that leaves us first with about me. Uh, I'm Andre Rezer, software engineer at Red Hat, and I'm working on satellite project with uh, downstream product uh, Red Hat from Foreman. You can find me on GitHub, and you can ping me on IRC on Freenode. If you have further questions or if you see the recording, and have further questions. So, Foreman. What's Foreman? Uh, who knows Foreman in the room? Everyone. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> I thought I'm uh, left with the introduction of Foreman, so that leaves me without without job. Um, but okay, let's do the interesting bits. Uh, Foreman. Uh, is lifecycle management, and lifecycle starts with uh, provisioning. Lifecycle server starts with provisioning. So, uh, what Foreman Foreman does is managing the DHCP, DNS, and Pixie and TFTP for uh, kickstart uh, or kickstart kickstart provisioning. And to see it. I have the mm, host form here, so I have everything pre-selected. So just uh, I will just walk you through it. Uh, default parameters for virtual machine. I want uh, CentOS, CentOS 77. I have my password typed in. Uh, Do you want to reset a little? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Of course. Yeah, I just told you off the top of my glasses. <laughs> Yeah. Better? Yeah, just, far away. just tell me. This is far away. Okay? Yes, far away. Thank you. <coughs> okay. So I got my interface set up. Um, I'll use uh, Lizard for everything. And I will kick off the, the installation. So now uh, the machine uh, is created and Pixie, Pixie record for that machine. On your laptop? On my laptop, yeah. Uh, Pixie is set it up, DHCP record is added, and now the machine uh, boots up and provision itself. We can see it's going to boot. Yeah. And the provisioning is started up. So, that's the provisioning part. Uh, we are uh, preparing IPv6, which should be in next version. So you can do IPC um, provision uh, through only IPv6. And the uh, customization of, of the process is done through templating. So if you need something, something extra, there are templates, uh, there are default templates which you can Edit and add the orbits to the process, and there are uh, compute profiles which you can use to tune up uh, and pre predefine your defaults for small small virtual machine, medium virtual machine, and so on. So now <coughs> to the interesting part <coughs> for what we are all here. Configuration management. We are integrating with configuration management tools. We started with Puppet. Uh, there are plugins for Chef and Salt, and obviously Ansible. So that's what, I, what I'm going to talk about here. But first, I will just uh, mention one small thing. If you haven't seen this picture, you don't know Foreman. And this I want to just mention that uh, we use smart proxies if you have uh, locations. So you 
set just the smart proxy and just the smart proxy needs uh, to see the formal server and uh, the rest of your in infrastructure can be disconnected and that's about it in this picture if you are interested just ask me but uh, I don't think we need to go through it and we are getting to the form an Ansible plugin if you want to want to install the plugin uh, you would do it through installer which you definitely used for uh, installing Forman because if you haven't you uh, didn't install it probably so here is what you do you have to install remote execution uh, and Ansible Ansible is run through a remote execution so that's why you need, you need both <coughs> so now we we want to use Ansible right what we first need we need some machines to run the Ansible against so how we can uh, get the machines to form them Right now I have uh, here four machines which have been provisioned through Foreman but uh, that's not always the case, right? You can have some machine which is not provisioned <coughs> through Foreman but you still want to run Ansible against it. So we will run Ansible playbook with inventory and this will bring the host in and what oh yeah okay sorry and what it does under under the hood now I have the inventory pretty sim simple inventory with only one host, uh, use root, and uh, here is my key for the host. And pretty simple playbook. Basically, we are do we are doing uh, we are doing nothing. We are just running ls, and the most important part is uh, the Ansible callback plugin for Foreman which you got uh, set up uh, like this in a uh, Ansible configuration you need to whitelist the Foreman, Foreman callback and uh, <coughs> enable bin Ansible callbacks runnable, runnable callbacks and here provide the settings for uh, for Ansible uh, Ansible callback, uh, URL of the foreman, and uh, certificates. If you if you are having self signed certificates, uh, I'm not using using uh, HTTPS in my setup, so I'm having just dumb file because the callback is not re uh, is not ready for running without without uh, HTTPS. So it's looking for the for the certificates even though you are you are not using them <coughs> and in the meantime the machine hopefully spun up no it's in here but something is wrong Okay. Yeah, maybe the Yeah, the SSH is probably still still down. Okay, so 
Now we run pretty simple uh, playbook against the machine and we are seeing the machine in our inventory now. Mm. We uh, might, might want to set up uh, where the machine is going to be added. I have the organization and location for it, but you have to look into uh, Puppet configuration for it. And here you have the default, default organization and default location, which is going to be used. Um, and you can even add facts in Ansible for, for the machine if it's uh, reporting the fact it will, it's going to be used. Uh, as an organization and location for the host. And that's how you get the machine in your inventory. Now I can uh, yeah. I can run something interesting on the machine through Foreman. So uh, first I will need some uh, uh, preparation for it. I have already uh, my smart proxy which is running Ansible plugin installed and I will uh, go on and uh, import uh, roles from it because I need to need to know the names of the roles which I can use. I have some in here already but if I wouldn't have uh, I would go on and um, import them from the smart proxy I'm using and in here I can see that I have new uh, new role which is uh, which is not added in my foreman instance <coughs> and I will just go <coughs> and import it now I will edit the new machine. I will go to tab Ansible roles and I will add the uh, firewall D, which is uh, my role for setting up fire, firewall D. This uh, role is edited, so it disabled the firewall D actually, but you get the idea. And now I just uh, go on and run the Ansible or also against the against the machine. It will do stuff. So I will get back to it in a while. What I oh I can do, do next, I can see what uh, variables are in those uh, in those roles I imported. I need, uh, I need to need to import them, and I have some variables that I want to want to override. Uh, because my demo is about uh, configuring new location uh, so we will spun up a new smart proxy uh, for that location I have a role prepared which uh, is going to do that for me but for that I need to uh, edit some variables in that role I would need to do that obviously but uh, I want uh, that proxy to be able to run Ansible so the default in that role is that is just a smart proxy without the Ansible, Ansible feature so I will override that variable and define it as true and I don't need to update this variable because I have it 
hard coded just to be sure but I have my roles defined. I can uh, see that there is a host out of sync, which means that uh, the roles haven't been run in some time against it. You can define define this in settings. <coughs> there is uh, how many time the uh, report is valid. So, uh, how often it should it should be running? I have it on two hours and ten minutes, and now I will need to define the job that is going to going to run the run the Ansible roles uh, against uh, against my hosts. just write mo which is five hosts and I would go on and schedule uh, future execution and schedule it recurrently so it would run every hour um, at some minute and never never end up so this would run all the uh, all the rows you would uh, update them on my on my hosts and uh, it would update the status of of those hosts <coughs> i will not do that because even with five hosts it can uh, be hard for my machine because it's already running a lot of uh, a lot of virtual machines so I will run just just one to spin up. <coughs> now you can see the uh, last status is failed because we failed the last execution. So that's how you can check the status. more um, interesting and we will define a job template what is a custom template to run against the host here 
uh, you are defining the playbook that is going to be executed against your hosts and you can uh, use the inputs in here what is going to be asked uh, when uh, it's executed so you can I have uh, input name in here just and just to see what input is uh, we can have some default for it and then we can use it in the in the playbook here we are just defining some facts which can be used later on I'm using variable username and it will be used from the, from the input here I uh, I'm just printing out all the facts which are uh, Mm, downloaded from format so we can see them later <coughs> and in here I just selected uh, three rows I have and statically inputted them uh, there are basically no limitations what you can do so you can you can go on and I didn't want to be so bold, so I am having the template in here written. But I can simplify that a bit and use the array of rows, which can be uh, input or fact. And I'm going through that array in Ruby and outputting the row. It's not so interesting, but you got the idea that the Ruby is run before the playbook is uh, is prepared, and you can play with the with the playbook beforehand. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so you embed the, you embed the Ruby. Code? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's because of the underlying image. Oh. Uh, no. It's because it's Ruby on Rails application, so that's oh, the why. Performance I mean, Ruby on Rails. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, so this will this will first execute the Ruby Ruby parts. It will uh, render what the Ruby Ruby and, the and it will hand it over to the answer. Yeah. <coughs> are you running a beta version now? Uh, you mean because for you see a lot of JS query, script query errors and problems. Yeah, <laughs> it's not error. It's just uh, like a debugging mode. Or yeah, or debugging mode. mode. So I will run run this playbook against uh, the host, which hopefully spun up in the meantime. You can see how easy it is to search for your hosts in here. Now I'm just uh, looking for the host I want to run this script against. And now I will go on. I will use the playbook I just created. against the host that I spun up now. Yeah. And uh, in that playbook uh, you've seen an example how to print out the facts that are handed over to Ansible from Foreman. And here you can you can see them. Oh There is a bunch bunch of stuff, but the basic uh, basic stuff about the about the host is uh, the networking inf informations, its name, its in what uh, which subnet format it is, and what user uh, 
it belongs to, what organization it is in, and so on. You can later on use that in, in your roles. Oh. I'm a bit out of mouse now, for some reason. Uh. Don't anyone have an idea why my mouse could have get stuck? <laughs> no. Don't you have a mouse somewhere? Okay. I will try to go on without without it, but we have one. We have one. You saw it before. Yeah, we 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 are trying to untangle the. It works perfect. Thanks. Mm. And now you can head back to host and you can see that the status is going to update to in sync. Okay, now we have uh, the new host which we created at the beginning of uh, the presentation and it now states it's installed so it's up and running and we can go on and add some Ansible roles to it. Disable Firewall D so it communicates with us and now I will just that's a bit of a thing that you need to uh, have in mind if you are using the default uh, uh, Ansible roles run, uh, the roles are run in a alphabetical order, so you can order them right now. So they should be in the point in the potent and not uh, depend one on each other. <coughs> so. First, I will just add the necessary repositories. And now I will go on and add the main role, which we prepared before with all the, all the variables. I will save it. Maybe I will show you again. It's the form and pro proxy role. And I will run it. And now it should install a new Ansible proxy and register it to format. So we, we will have uh, after the Ansible run, we will have new proxy which we provisioned and we will have new location which we can add new host to and run, run Ansible against it. We'll missing something I don't know what it's missing so I will not try to debug it I'm sorry for the, this but um, we have seen this host run and those were the same same roles so I have the proxy in here already probably because it passed 
on the proxy for which is my prepared proxy so I cheated a bit and I have the proxy because it's in no organization okay didn't register itself or I can just check the here is how you check the last run you go to monitor jobs and you check what it did no this is not the job I want So the live demo is not, not going to work. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Uh, but I will show you how you can define what a smart proxy is used for running Ansible. Uh, I wanted to switch them on, but I will not. So in here you have the subnets and you are defining the smart proxy used per subnet and in here you are selecting what smart proxies are uh, used for this subnet you can select more of them and uh, the load is going to be uh, balanced on those smart proxies okay so that's about it I'm sorry for the live demo uh, that it didn't went so well uh, and of course Foreman is not the only way how you would run, uh, run Ansible uh, why should you use it and what are the alternatives so uh, Foreman is pretty great for having the inventory because that's the main use case and we are pretty great at it so uh, having the machines in the in the form and makes sense to me but then the Ansible is uh, a bit not done let's say so you have to hack around a bit so if you have your use case is uh, somewhat uh, more advanced than you what you have seen right now uh, you have a lot of machines for example that may, uh, may be a tricky part if you are getting to 4,000, 4, 5,000 it can be harder to run through foreman can eat resources so you can uh, go on and install AWX and use uh, foreman as an inventory uh, there is uh, API uh, in foreman for Consuming, consuming the inventory from, and uh, then you would use the callback which you have seen at the beginning of the presentation, and the callback will report defects to format, so you have defects in format. What's new in Ansible plugin? 
uh, we switched recently to the Ansible runner uh, instead Ansible playbook command which should be more stable and it uh, allows us to uh, run uh, against more hosts in one single run because before we would run a uh, background task uh, per host and run Ansible playbook in it which is not the most performant uh, way how to do it and there is a new inventory script which I just mentioned uh, there was the old one which uh, rendered the host with uh, all of the facts uh, format head and it was uh, pretty slow so the new one you can select, uh, select what you want to render and it does it more efficiently so uh, it's in the last stable version already so you can, you can try that on if you have problems in the past with uh, performance there shouldn't be any more and we have uh, some change in the background processing engine which I ha haven't mentioned in here because it's uh, probably not important to, to know for you but uh, we uh, improve the performance of, of that and ability to, uh, to scale so it should be should be better the performance of Ansible informant right now so maybe we can get to AWX okay if you have some ideas or questions should I plan to add hyper e or system virtual machine manager support officially I mean what? Sorry? Uh, I plan to add a uh, Hyper-V or System Virtual Machine Ma Manager uh, support officially. No. No, no we are not planning to. It's, um, it's just, uh, it's, I think it's just about the manpower and we already have a lot of compute resources supporting all of them is hard. So if we see some developer would like to join that, we'll, we'll be happy to give you... Yeah, you can contribute. <laughs> I mean, we will help you to build that plugin because compute resources can be added as plugins. We'll be happy to help you. We will be happy to add it into the installer, package it for you. If you need someone who actually understands how to be APIs. Thank you. Yeah. As far as I know, now is uh, the form heavily entwined with Puppet? Uh, the now, not heavily. Because not heavily, not heavily. we are we are you know, trying to loosen it, loosen it. Ah, okay. Yeah. So that you can choose if you want to have Puppet or Ansible or both. Or yeah, yeah, exactly. Right now you still uh, have the Puppet bits in the UI, yeah. but you don't need to bring it in. Okay. Already. So. Okay. And yeah. we are planning to even remove it from the UI yeah, if you are not using. So you can. You have the choice, or Ansible, or Puppet, or both. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So let me ask this way, is this something that would make it easier for you to install Foreman if you wouldn't bring these Puppet screens with that? No, I don't really mind. Because I ignore them. Yeah. 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 There is just right now like a discussion in the upstream, like, should we extract it to a plugin? Because Ansible, Ansible, and Chef are provided as plugins. Puppet traditionally was integrated into Foreman, so should we actually make it on the same level as every other configuration management system? Yeah, that would be nicer. Yeah, okay. But the installer is. Yes. But it's just Puppet agent that you install once. You yeah. install it the module point. Yeah. But right now, you have seen failing <laughs> a role, but a role which should uh, bring up the proxy, which is not using the installer inside. and. Uh, I have even Foreman installer playbook for for uh, installing Foreman itself. Okay, so it maybe in the future we will we will support installing through Ansible as well, but it's still like yeah. Okay, now it's work in progress. Yeah. I, I think it's not an easy task to do. Yeah. Because, it, because there is a lot of options. It would be easy if uh, we would just uh, select some defaults and install the Foreman and with one proxy for you, 
but the forming installer has like a tons of options and you can select whatever you want and it's quite hard to support. Seems. Uh, based on the demo, it seems uh, it is uh, importing a role is it is tightly coupled to roles. To a role. Yeah. Principal role. Yeah. So, uh, maybe there is some option to import a project that can be used to import a playbook or a collection in future. That can be possible. Yeah. Uh, the playbooks right now are the job templates, so <coughs> you can like pass it to the job job template definition the playbook, but yeah. Maybe EWS the EWS has this create import project or something. Yeah. It's from a particular part. Not in not in formal. Yeah. So yeah, till now. So maybe yeah. would it be useful if let's say we would be scanning Ansible collections installed and if we see playbook there we would just copy it up into the format. Is that yeah. like I mean Ansible collections would be containing roles to start with and playbooks in future. Yeah. Right now it's not. <coughs> roles work with collection right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually not that hard to do because the job template that Andre showed is really just a playbook. You can add Ruby in that, but you don't have to, right? It can be a simple playbook. So for us, it's just scanning what's there on the call system and putting it into our database. Yeah. Right now, it creates a hard dependency on Ansible. Even if I don't need a role, I need to create one and. Uh, That's what I mean. No, not necessarily. You, you don't need roles in order to run Ansible from Orman. It was shown here, but, but you can also run any arbitrary playbook without any role okay. in the mm. Well, if you don't, uh, don't add the roles in the playbook, yeah. you can okay. run. You can use them even all together. And then uh, in the facts, you, you have where from the fact is. So you can filter it through the host. So I want facts for, for this proxy, and I would see that I have. And here you would have the salt, salt facts, puppet facts. Right. First of all, thanks for the presentation. I'm definitely going to try this out now. Perfect. But for 2.0 is out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, In two weeks or so. I have a remark about your slides. You use the black background and green text in your slides for command line rules. Yeah. That's not very legible. <laughs> okay. So, you so I, I'd suggest to up the contrast there, like a white background, mm -hmm. black text. And yeah, I can definitely definitely do that. Text. Um, if you're nagging about your shit. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the yeah. one. That was the worst yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot read that at all. Okay. To the first one. <laughs> I can your very edit first it. slide. If you're nagging about your slides anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know what you're doing. Can you please? We're also far back saying what, what company are you working for? What's the second one? The second one yeah. What, what company hat. do you work for? <laughs> Red Hat? Oh. How do you, yeah. how do you, how do you write Red Hat? It's a rat. I'm <laughs> <laughs> <We're> just nagging. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Do you have